Mimitzer's Voice. This is our new video on how to create dechlorinated PVC ion exchange membranes. All we need is clean cloth, as usual, and we also need some uh, PVC cement. This uh, PVC cement is quite amazing, you know. It's really useful. It uh, essentially what makes all of this possible right now. And yeah, so what we first do is we gotta open it first. After the opening process, we just essentially spread it up, up into here, coat the entire surface with PVC. You do not have to soak this in water because this is a different process entirely. The hydration actually occurs during the dechlorination step. So the dechlorination is only a partial dechlorination because if it was fully dechlorinated, well, let's just say it's just going to dissolve and you don't want that. So a partially dechlorinated PVC membrane, which contains some hydroxide uh, groups instead of chlorine, is uh, what exactly is the thing that we want to end up with. And from what I've read in some papers, the, what determines how dechlorinated it gets is the uh, temperature and reaction time. What I like to do is to leave it with a hot solution of sodium hydroxide. You know, around like 80 degrees Celsius for like four hours. And then four hours later, I just pick it back up. So you apply, you can apply as many coats as you want. And then you can check the permeability of the membrane when it dries up. You want as little as possible permeability. So yeah, the step is basically coat the entire thing and you let it dry out in the sun or in the air. You don't dunk this in water because you don't need to. me painting this then after I think we're only gonna need one coat ah, it depends we'll find out anyway that's a fully coated workpiece this just gets left here or put in another position like put somewhere else to dry up so yeah I'll meet you when that process is done okay so this is the dechlorination step. This is a hot solution of sodium hydroxide. It's pretty much at boiling point. Ideally, you should leave it at 50 degrees but for like four hours, but this works too. Essentially, it will cool down anyway. And I mean, last time I did it at 50, but this time I'm gonna do it at boiling point. So overall, the dechlorination step will occur anyway. And you just leave the membrane in there for the better part of a long time. And best you cover it with something like, oh God, something like this so that it can maintain the temperature and maybe put your sodium hydroxide on top. Anyway, <coughs> it's now covered and I'm going to be leaving that for like the better part of a few hours for it to dechlorinate. Then the next step is immersion in citric acid. So the citric acid can uh, hook up to the uh, alcohol groups that have formed in the uh, basic environment. Okay, so it's uh, been a few hours and I have to go and lift this out of the bath now. Essentially, I put something over it and now I've taken it off. Now it's time to lift this out texture is still really nice and soft probably should flicker it like that anyway I'm gonna move this out for now I'm just gonna lay it over here I'm gonna change out this bath water for citric acid and we're gonna dump it in okay so it's time for the citric acid all I gotta do is just dump all of it in like this it doesn't really fucking matter right slosh it around town This solution will immediately change the gear. Right, you know now the membrane is quite soft. Once I put it in here, like after a few hours, it's going to get really hard because the uh, citrate is going to start to link with it. It's actually getting harder now. It's, no, it's not as bendable as it was before. And it will also change color slightly to a slight whitish color. But you just want to leave it in here for like 
maybe six hours or something for it to fully react and eventually you'll end up with a nice membrane that you can dry out and once it dries out it's perfect so uh, it's been a few more hours and this this thing has gotten much more rigid it doesn't bend nearly as much as before the surface also looks a little different because it has reacted with the citric acid so the next step is to dry this and the membrane should be ready for use and such membranes are quite conductive they actually have proton and uh, cation exchange properties unlike the regular PVC porous barriers. The color has also changed a little bit. I don't know if it shows up on camera but it's slightly hazier or whiter than when it started especially on the edge. So uh, here's an example of one that I made previously. It's more dry although it kind of curved because I kind of left it in an uneven place. Because, I mean, I used the other half to make my uh, current sulfuric acid cell. But when it dries out, it really changes color to this, like, whitish. And it does also curl up. But only after a certain amount of dryness. To reset this, all you need to do is just to wet it a little. So there's, like, a certain level of dryness you want to get to. Don't make it too dry because it, it seems to curve up. At least in my experience. It might also be my fault. But anyway, here's the wet piece. Still really hard and rigid. Once it dries out, it will look a lot like this piece, but flatter. And leave it for a few more days and you'll end up with something like this. Of course, I, I suggest that when you're drying it out, that's when you put it in the frame. Otherwise, you're going to have to rehydrate it and dry it again till it's just the right time to put it in the frame and not too long that it ends up becoming curved. And if you want to speed up the dry, you can always put paper towels and all of that. Remember to wash off the citric acid before drying because such stuff is pretty hygroscopic. So anyway, that's all it is for uh, ion exchange membranes. Uh, hopefully you guys end up with uh, really nice ones. You can use other agents such as instead of reacting it with citric acid, you can actually use a sulfonated... Uh, Polymer, or not, not sulfonated polymer, sulfonated uh, benzoic acid. That that works really well as well. And you can also use uh, terephthalic acid. You can use either of those, and they'll make pretty much the same thing. But the sulfonated polymer is what they use commercially, so that would be really good. All this madness to make a bit of sulfuric acid. It's running at 12 volts, and these bubblers prevent the cell from getting too hot which actually damages the polymer composite electrode.